Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Sonia Wissink, and I have a great pleasure to welcome you to our today's uh, webinar, uh, which will give you a little peek into the future and a deep dive into trends and trend analysis, how we are doing it at Consumer Luminaires. Uh, first, let me just uh, briefly describe you uh, what you're seeing on the screen and how you can interact with us. Um, in the middle of the screen, of course, you will see the presentation. You will be muted during the whole duration of the webinar. And to interact with us, you have two tools on your right-hand side of the screen. Uh, the first one is chat, where you can chat with the host and the technical support of our webinar. And at the end of the webinar, we're also going to open the question and answer session where you can post your question and we will do our best to answer all of them during the webinar itself. However, if the time will not allow us, we will address all the questions uh, in our uh, post-webinar uh, mail. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce you our today's speaker, Sam Span. Our experienced senior designer, uh, design consultant uh, working on the materials, finishes, and trend research and analysis dedicated to Philips Consumer Luminaires. Um, you will have a chance to read all about her in the, also in the post-recorded session, which will be also published on, the, on, the, on our uh, website. Um, Sandy, I give the podium and the microphone to you. And I wish you all the most pleasant one hour uh, diving into our trends and trends research. Okay, thank you, Sonia. So, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in this webinar. As Sonia said, my name is Sandy Spahn. I'm a part of the design team in Contig. Just a moment, it already goes too quick. <laughs> I wanted to share with you the design team in Contig to just show you who they are and who we are. So here again you see the design team. And we as a design team we say we create live solutions that match people's activities, spaces and mood. And in this webinar we would like to give you an introduction to the design and trend research and analysis that we do for Philips Consumer Luminaires. It's my daily job and we would like to give you a glimpse of that. We also have a part of the team in Shenzhen. There are six product designers working over there, and they also design consumer luminous for us. So the content today in this webinar is, we want to show you a bit more about who is Philips Design, why are they unique, what do they offer, and how do they operate. Of course, we are diving into the trends, and we would like to share with you who is involved, why is it important, and how does it work. And we dive a bit deeper in the consumer luminous trends, and we do that first style. In Consumer Luminous, we work with four style groups, and you will see more of that later on. So first of all, Philips Design, who are we? We are a global design community, and we have around 400 individuals working. For Consumer Luminous, as said, we work in Conti and in uh, Shenzhen. And the blue line that you see over here in this kind of map, that is uh, the lighting map. It's an in-house design team of Philips. Uh, we already exist since 1926. It's a global community with a lot of international cultures, and we are fully integrated in Philips as a business partner. And we are most of all recognized because of our leadership. We are internationally everywhere uh, asked. We sometimes are in the TEDx. You can see us in lectures, or we give classrooms uh, on the academies. You see us in the magazines, in, le in uh, interviews, so you can learn a bit more about who is there and who you want to talk to. We also try to win awards, of course, because that makes us more recognizable in the world. And last year, with only Luminaires, we won, more than 50, we won than around 15 awards for the LED portfolio. And it was really nice to be there on the stage with uh, Apple and Samsung next to you. So I think uh, that promises also something for the future. 
I see a note that I can't hear anything from Natalie. I don't know what's going on, but maybe Charlotte, you can check if I'm if everybody can hear me. So within Philips Design, we do focus on people. We do the design thinking and the creativity and the research, but all with people in mind. That's the focus. So everything that we do should be relevant for people. In our group, we have a lot of different functions of design. So we have the visual trend analysis, that's where I'm a part of. We have product designers, communication designers, but of course there are also a lot of people research uh, designers there and psychologists and brand consultancies. So there's a lot of knowledge available. But in Philips Design, we are used to work with the high design process. And that are six steps, and that's actually from the first part that we try to understand the domains, really to the end product. So we try to come up with the ideas, the insights, the trends, the foresight, and then we continuously work until we have an end product. So the trends, what about the trends? The next stage. We have here a trends poll. Charlotte, are you introducing the trends poll? And I would like you to answer here what you think of it, just to, as a trigger. So the time has been there, but I don't know if anybody has the idea what to do. But what I wanted to trigger here, like a lot of people say that trends are a commodity. Everybody thinks they know the trends and that they are easy to find. But if you know the trends, you are finished. Is that enough? Are you really finished? I think that it just starts. Oh, I get now the answers in. A lot of true, they say 30%, false say 22%, and no answer 49%. So you just so it's a bit in the middle. <laughs> but it means that it's, there's a lot of uh, yes or no, true or false um, thought behind it. But to be honest, it's an expertise to work and translate with them and give them a, a meaning. I think that's the most crucial thing that we need to do with trends. We all think we can see them, but how to translate them and bring them into meaningful solutions, I think that's the challenge and that's why we, we, are, we are here for that to do. So what do we do in Philips? We invest and do research to understand the trends and consumers and the shoppers in the market better. That's the whole reasoning behind it. Trends are manifestations of change. They are observed every day around us. And we do this to better anticipate on changes in society and the changing needs of the consumer and on the marketplace. Our challenge is to interpret it and to apply the new insights as good as possible. So it depends on your target group, on the context, to give a meaning to every trend. And maybe there are more trends that are not fitting and not matching, and then you just leave them next to you. There are four types of trends. We have the societal trends, we have lifestyle trends, cultural and market trends, and product and aesthetic trends. And I will explain them a bit further in the coming slides. The first one is societal trends. Those trends are also called mega trends. And that means they are there for a longer period of time. They can be there for 10 to 20 to 30 years. They're also influencing our daily lives further, and that comes then in the lifestyle trends. But an example of such a societal trend is sustainability. It's already there for, well, I think around five years, but it will still grow and grow and influences our daily lives. That influence can go from young to old. And here you see an example. How do we act in our daily life? What is our behavior? What do we give to our children as learnings? What is important for us? And what will we keep on 
giving them through during their lives and also when they become older. What do we do with the aging population that is coming up? How do we give them the lifestyle and the, the leisure time? What do they do? How can we see? How can we follow? That's a bit what you see back. What are the needs? What, what, that's what you see back in the lifestyle trends. Then you have the cultural or market trends. Cultural trends are also, let's say, symbols. It's symbols that we classify and that we represent what we see in the market. And in the market, you still see the distinctive ways that people live and how they live and how they act and what they choose. And all that together, if we classify that, then you can see also back into that the cultures. So it's symbols for new experiences. And in this slide, you see the hue. I think it was quite a symbol for a new era in how we are going to influence our atmospheres and moods in the homes. And next to that, you see the pain and relief plaster. It's uh, how can uh, light become a medicine for you? And then we come into the product aesthetic trends. Aesthetics are really talking about the creation and the appreciation of beauty and taste. It's all about taste in the end. But we need to give a kind of a guideline, a kind of a language to it, to make it recognizable for people. So all these trends are interacting with each other. There's always a connection between the trend levels. A micro trend can be linked back to the bigger lifestyle trends or the social trends. And those level, those trend levels, they build, build upon each other. So you never can see them separately. Who is involved in these trends? In Philips, we have a trend analysis team. And I think we are with about 20 people in there. Here you see the images of all the people working for that. We do have regular contact, and we try to gain all the knowledge that we have and bring it together so we can reuse it and rephrase it. Next to that, we have also a global network. And that's to add new freshness in. We, have, we need input that is up to date. So we also have subscriptions on certain trend agencies. We sometimes invite them. We get reports in on all the lifestyle and the social and the aesthetic levels. And we all collect them and see what we can do. It's mainly access to inspirational inputs, and we need to translate them further. We also do research different domains that are important for consumer luminaires. And that can be desk research. It can mean that we are going into the, uh, the countries, into the cities, into the uh, into the, uh, the homes of people even. And what we try to do is understand the consumers. How are they living? What do they do? What do they need? What do they buy? How is their home look like? Is there a difference between spaces in the home? What are their aspirations? What kind of interiors do they like? So what we in the desk research do is we look in certain domains and we look at which domains are very important for us. So we see interior design, of course, you have furniture design, but we also need to check what is happening on light effects, what is happening in the world or in the domain of health and well-being, and what are the differences between the cultures. So we need to check every domain to see what pops up and what comes in. And for that, we have within Philips a trend wiki. And there, Claudia Lieshout is the owner of this. And on this trend wiki, we collect all the signals, all the things that we think are interesting. And then if it's specifically for lighting, or for health and well-being, or for consumer lifestyle, here you can find all the signals, all the signals back that the team, the trend analysis team, collects. And if there are a lot of signals coming up with the same text, then you can speak of that the trend starts to exist. If you want to look at this trend wiki, or you want to know more about this, you need to contact Claudia. 
but we also go to fairs. We go to seminars. And we see everywhere what is happening around us, in the fashion world, in the material world, in the interior world, in the science. Because you need to know what is happening out there to be able to see if you can use it, yes or no. And next to that, for the people, for the diving into the people understanding, we also use the Sensidium model. And in this model, the motivations or the drivers of people are better explained and they get all a separate color. And what we try to do then is see what is the most important one for the people that we use. And next to that, within consumer luminaires, we use four style groups. We have the heritage one, the modern, the contemporary, and the expressive. And the heritage one, you can say, it's more regional oriented and it's based on traditions and rituals. For the contemporary, this can be also very global and it's about interaction with family and friends. The modern is also a global oriented style group. In our sense, more focused on minimum, minimal and architectural input. And the expressive one is more focused on the individual. So let's zoom in. What does that mean? What are the style groups for us? So within Philips, we look at the homes of people. And the first one is the heritage home. And again, the poll question comes up here. A lot of people think heritage is old fashioned. I would love to hear or know what the audience think of this. Is this true or false? Or is it yes or no? Do you think it is old fashioned or not? Because we as designers, of course, need to make something out of the heritage. And I think, in my opinion, it's not old fashioned at all. It gives us new challenges. And it's building on the knowledge that we already had in the past. But I will dive into that in the coming slides. So I just continue to see later on what the answers from you all are. The heritage world within consumer luminaires. We go in the interiors from robust traditional interiors, quite male. to more homeliness, a bit more feminine comes in. The heritage home, we say, radiates warmness and homeliness, of course. I got now your question, your poll questions, your answers, actually. And most people say, no, heritage is not old fashioned. And I totally agree with that. It's not dusty at all. We need to make it fresh and new. And that's also possible in the heritage style group. So we go from homeliness, where the overall look and feel is about family life, family, conviviality. You can also make it a bit more modern, as I just said, modern, traditional, just by adding a color in a room that already freshens up. You can collect a lot of items beautiful treasured objects from maybe your grandma or from other family members or from things that you found in the past. And you can also personalize it a bit and make it a collection with your own stuff. So it be your interior becomes a mix and match of everything. The colors in these rooms are also a bit more modern and fresh, but they revitalize the setting and they still keep it calm. So they give energy, but do not overpower it. And I think that's important for a traditional setting. You can also make it more warm, more energy life. And then the industrial craft comes in. Here you see the contrast of cold and warm elements, and it will bring a lively atmosphere in the room. You see the weathered 
aged materials combined with a fresh color. And next to that, we will go to more nostalgic values, the nostalgic of different eras. It can be the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, or the 80s. It's revival of those times. So who are the people that live in these areas? What are their motivations? What drives those people? Belonging, that's the main, main motivation. It's about love and care in the family. It's about doing things together, enjoy each other, bringing old rituals, old habits back from the past. Being at home, being intimate, taking the time for each other. So it's about rediscovering. It's about rituals and authenticity. The nostalgia. Preserve what you had in the past and combine it with something new that you see now. Like the car examples of the movie cars that is very popular by children, mixed here with the old car, maybe from your dad more than 50 years ago. So the trends. The social trend is that it's about authenticity. People want a real and authentic life. They want to be proud of their roots and they want to say that they can organize their lives around what is really important and essential for them. They are, people are looking for who are we really? What is my identity? And this also comes up a bit due to the economical crisis. They only want to consume what is best for them and their family. So, for example, here you see the guy that makes the cook, the cooking himself. He's very proud of him. And it brings also more value to everything. If you look at the lighting solutions here, they should support the atmosphere and give an added value there. So if we go to the linked lifestyle trends, it's about bringing the past into the future. So you want to show that you're proud of your roots and that you involve them, but you also want to make use of today's technology. And I think the perfect example here is the Skype video. So you can talk to the grandma and granddad, but at the same time use the day-to-day -day new technology there and link back the new birth or the new beginning. And our luminaire here, this yellow, is also a very nice example, I think. Because here, it's a result of the new way of thinking around an existing archetype. It's a very known shape, applied with golden leaves, but with the new embedded LED technology. And the most funny thing of this one is that there's no bulb on the inside, so it really also gives a surprise. And I think the next challenge, also in the heritage home, would be translation, and that means more making own ambiences, set your personal preferences, even if you have a traditional interior. This all should be possible with the new technology embedded. The technology is not visible. You still stay in the interior that you always would like to have, but you can use and set your own ambience. So the personalization via the U would be a really challenge in this room. So the market trend that we see is nostalgia. And here, if you focus on light and light solutions, the most important thing is that we want to trigger for happy memories. We say that in the heritage living room, the heart of the home, the ambience light, is the main focus. And we should be able to change the mood according our wishes. It should be warm, it should be welcoming, and there should be an ambience that is so inviting and subtle orchestrated that people who experience it don't quite know why it feels so wonderfully warm and intimate. If you then look further into the product aesthetic trends, we go from collection, so only collecting stuff, to the industrial craft, really, really picking out what adds value for us. If I then go into deepness, you see the aesthetics a bit more. And that's weathered, 
materials, it's combinations of materials, it's noble materials, craftsmanship is involved, it's pure, it's sensual. And what we then do within our design department is that we try to explore what do we have, what can we find. And you have a collection of all different kind of things together. And then we need to make sense out of that. So we need to interpret it, what is the classic design, how can we make it new, how can we bring elegance in and make it a nice total shape. So if you look at the shallow, these are explorations that our designers had. So they thought about how can we age with dignity, what is a precious material, how can we make use of the iconic shape and bring it into something new. And then this is the end result that already is there on the market. And I think it's not only a modern element, but it's also a part of a new heritage product. And next to that, you also see the new coming up uh, outdoor articles that are there. So in a summary, in the heritage home, it's about authenticity, going back into the future via nostalgic elements and we use the industrial craft for 2013 aesthetics. The next one is the contemporary home. We again have here a poll question. What is contemporary? Is it the same as modern? I would love to hear your answers. The contemporary home, I just quickly continue, radiates effortless elegance, we say, and the overall look and feel is one of relaxation and practicality. So we go in the contemporary home from soft, comfortable areas where we also use color to create a, a kind of a tranquil atmosphere in the homes because blues do that, they bring a certain calming atmosphere and that's important in the comfortable area. We go to soft scents, there comes more contrast in materials, there comes a hard combined with the soft materials, more naturals enter the rooms. So it can be wood, it can be bamboo, it can be glass and wood combined. So it's a bit more daring, a bit more experimental, but also more natural. It becomes a bit more lighter and a bit more green, but still soft. It's the interiors are inspired by the nature, so we want to bring the outdoor inside, or the outside inside. We want to soothe our minds. And the ultimate goal is that we create an atmosphere where our health and well-being is optimized to the best. I see your poll answers now. Contemporary is modern. Yes, say 22%. So still a lot of people. And no, say 56%. And it's no. Contemporary is not modern. Um, the term modern comes a bit out of the 60s. It goes way back earlier. but our current thinking of a modern way comes out of that time. And what is important to remember is that modern style is timeless on itself. If you had something that was modern, it will stay modern for a long time. But contem contemporary, on the other hand, that's an ever-changing term. It's more of what's happening from the present day. It's more actual, it's more present time. So that's a bit how you can try to keep them separate. So to continue with the presentation, the people into the contemporary home. They say, it's my home, it's my safe haven, I feel protected, I feel comfortable here, I feel secure. And that adds to the well-being. But they also want to relax and enjoy and bring nature elements inside. They want to consciously select what is good for them. So it's about doing good, being healthy, picking the right ingredients, 
making choices. So the social trend here that is linked is health and well-being. How can we add health and well-being in our lighting solutions in a sustainable manner? That should be our ultimate challenge. How can the sun, ex um, how can the sun inspire us? So we look in our lifestyle trends at eco-rituals. We want to bring them into our daily lives. So it's about energy saving elements. It's about recycling what we can recycle. It's about preparing the food in a healthy way. All these little aspects do add to this lifestyle element. So what about the light, the lighting solutions? We want to here use warm light for a soothing, relaxed and welcoming atmosphere. The lighting solutions are in an on and an off state, natural yet modern, and combined they create a familiar and contemporary feel. Dimmers are essential here to really create the best atmosphere that you would like to have. So in the aesthetics we go from comfort to soft natural. And that means from a bit more balanced to a bit more chaotic, organic product design language. If we dive into the 2D aesthetics, we want to make conscious material selections. We use authentic materials as much as possible. That means natural materials. We want to use the natural texture of materials. Fadings can go in, but also mono monotone colors or calming colors. That's all quite important. So we need to explore. What is that for us? What do we want to use as designers? What inspires us and what can we make in reality? So we see curved shapes. We want to feel secure. How can we make it more balanced, more honest and easy to understand? Can we bring in wood or can it be a ceramic material? Can it be glass? Or do we need to combine them to get the utmost out of them? What are the shapes? How are the curves flowing? Is it fluid? Is it organic? Or is it a mixture? What is the balance? How can we add the nature elements? And here you see the portfolio, some examples. You see here the jazz the new jazz collections and it looks like the drop from the ceiling is, a, is, a, is as if light was a tangible natural phenomenon. Also here the, the blocks, the drops, it looks like they are falling out of the ceiling and that was exactly the idea that it naturally comes out of the ceiling. So it resembles drops that emerge from the wire they are suspended on as if the light drops out of the power, out of the ceiling or out of the air. You see also the, the, the luminaires downwards having wood as a base and this is rubber tree wood and that's the waste part of the wood tree that we are using here. So a recap of the contemporary home. It's about health and well-being, using eco-rituals in our lifestyle, being attuned and giving it a soft natural aesthetic. Then we come into the modern home. We already discussed what is modern. So we also had as a design team the same exercise. Like what is modern for us? How can we rephrase it? What does it mean? What does it mean for shaping? Is it empty? Is it empty rooms? Or is it just no clutter? Or do we want to have control? Do we want to have an open atmosphere? Or do, does it need to radiate that we are very refined and sophisticated and that we can make choices and are constrained? So I think in general the overall look and feel is one of control and aesthetic consideration. The light qualities in a modern home are uncomplicated, pure, functional and neutral, yet orchestrated and engineered very carefully. And some elements can be shown as the only adornment, like the Balanza luminaire here. 
But above all, it should be of excellent quality. So no sacrifice. And we want to use it as much as possible everywhere. So it should be on a comfortable place in our daily routines and activities every moment of the day accessible. That's the idea. And that can be if we go in bath, but it can also be when we are just changing our clothes in our way. So the people. Who are the people? What is their motivation? Mainly control. And the essential of their lives should come back. They strive for perfection and they go for premium quality. But they are also critical. Not everything is okay. And it can be that something very cheap is as good as something very expensive. As long as it's perfect for what they want to do and what they want to use it for. The trends. Which trend is linked? Which social trend is linked to this? We talk about the Generation I. That's the generation that's born after the 80s. And their home is a different place. There they rethink the goods and the services that they will enter in their, in their lives. These people, this population, this will grow tremendously in the coming years because a lot of them, I think already around 40% will only be existing in Asia and in India. So a lot of people will be in this generation in the future. And they will determine a lot of what will coming up. So we cannot neglect them. We need to take into account their needs and their behaviors and their wishes. The lifestyle trend that is linked to them, we call it urban nomads. And those urban nomads are the hardworking city dwellers, we say, that combine everything. They don't mind where they are. They want to work and combine and multitask as much as possible. They work 24 hours a day. And as a consequence, their business and their personal lives are very much blending. So also their homes and their spaces blend into each other. So they can have a space where they need to work and lounge and relax at the same time. And the market trend that is linked to that is the lean and new market trend. And here we come back to the essential of life. That is reduction about all the possessions to the barest of essential. Only need and show what is necessary. And then we say, I'm often asked where I found my lamp. So I say that I go for the least complex design and the top of the range. So they want the best value for money. And they want to have the optimal conditions in their homes. So the aesthetics, we go from this deceptively simple to sculptural essence. We want to sculpt more the light effect. We want to take out what is possible. And in the aesthetics, it means pure and honest and very simple material use. It needs to be still functional but humble. And we can use frameworks or open structures to visualize the direction of what we need. A graphical impression of the knick-knack that we made, design exploration, minimal straight lines. Now my presentation keeps hanging, just a moment for that, I'm sorry. My slides are not continuing. But this is an exploration of the designers trying to come up with what is the bare essential that I need to design my luminaire with. And still, how can I still be able to use the new LED technology there and visualize it the best? Charlotte, can you help me? My presentation is hanging. I'm sorry if you... Oh, yes. I just see that I have to read... I didn't see everything at the moment. So this is another, so we go from the straight lines, the design exploration from the straight lines to the knick-knack that uh, came out this year in the 2012. And we go to a bit more human touch, but still keep the straight lines. 
So we want to bring in a kind of a human element, a kind of a sculptural element. How can we do that? So these are thinkings of the designers. How can we keep it graphical, but still bringing in a kind of a humble suggestion? And that's what we try to do in the new portfolio, adding a humble human element in straight lines. So what you see here is an example of outdoor, the dune top. And we say it's a humble design, bowing its head and the lighting the way for passengers by. It's a clean and minimal design look, but still modern and with a human touch. And next to that you see the Ladino, the Ladino range and also our um, spotlight that is made as kind of a, the most value for money element that you can buy for around 20 euros. So that also fits in the lean and new lifestyle trend because how can we make a product that is so desirable and also good in price? That's another element that is very important to think of when designing. It's, it might be that not always the shape is the most important thing, but that it's about the intention behind the product. And that was in this case happening. So the goal of that project was to create a LED spot with adequate light output which can be sold at a very low price to every consumer. That was the idea behind it. And therefore it also belongs to this trend. So to sum up, to recap the modern home, it's about control. We look at the lifestyle of urban nomads in a lean and new trend and we try to make our designs a bit more sculpted, a bit more human, but stay to the bare essential. The expressive foam is the last one, the last style group that we work with within Philips. So the expressive foam radiates energy and is a lust for life. And the overall look of feel is one of plainness and pronounced character. It really personalizes the room and the area. And a lot of our kids portfolio falls under this style group. Philips has a huge kids portfolio that perfectly fits here. It's a lot of contrast and graphical pattern and colors and combinations. So what about the people in these groups? They are individuals and they want to show that they are individuals. They are very confident in what they are doing. But they also have passion, they are, have a lot of energy and they want to stimulate and being proactive. They are open for new things, they want to try, they want to experiment. They also want to distinguish themselves and show who they are. They also say everyone is different and has a unique personality. What is mine? I want to show mine. How can I show it? Via my interior, via my clothing. It's an expression of myself. It's about energy. And if I'm a young or an older person, that doesn't matter. It's for all the same. I'm very vital and I'm an individual. So the social trend linked to this is individualism, as just said. I want to distinguish myself. Who am I? And the example shown here is the food processor of Philips. How can I make my own food and print it out? And another example is the OLED wall light that really reacts on when you pass by and when you move your hand. The lifestyle trend link is everyone is different. I like to give my personal twist to things. It can be my coffee, it can be my meals or my own creations. How can I show who I am? That's the, that's the message. And the market trend is about it's me in my universe. And I think the living colors also perfectly fit here because it's really is made to make your own personalized room and your own personalized atmosphere according to your own mood. It can be dramatic, it can be calm, it can be welcoming, just whatever you like every moment of the day. In the product aesthetic trends we go, go from character, quite outspoken elements, to the surprising with a twist. 
We still use characters, but we also add a certain interaction element with them. We invite the customer to work with the designs. The materials are very contrastful. A lot of graphics come in. While the interaction is intuitive, we need to think about the composition of materials, how to build things up, or how to make an eye-catching detail. So here you see some design explorations for the kids' place. How can we make a character for a kid that doesn't scare them and invite them to touch? What do we need to make them? How can we come into their worlds? And then we found the body land element. So we create different figures that do fit in that land. It's a wake-up light that you can set and that the children can learn with how to wake up, when to wake up, and if they are allowed to come out of bed and when to go to sleep. So it's for them a very visualization, a very good visualization of what they are allowed to do and what not, and they, they can learn when it's time to go to sleep and when it's time to stand up without disturbing the parents too much. So it's a day and a night function. That is the light effect element here, and that's the interactive part embedded in the character. But of course, the living colors, as you said, is also a perfect example. And then the recap for the expressive home, we talk about Generation I, about individualism. Everyone is different. It's the universe, the you universe, that we are talking in. It's about me and what I think is important and I want to show and personalize myself. And we do that with a surprising twist. And that's the end of the whole story. So this is what I wanted to share with you about trends and how we do the trends and trends analysis in Consumer Luminous and how we try to link them in a good way and use them to design. So this is all. Thank you for attending. So we can go now to the questions and answers. Sandy, thank you very much for this inspiring inspiration. Um, uh, the presentation, sorry. We have uh, five to ten minutes, maybe more, uh, in case any of our participants would, uh, would like to ask a question. Just to remind our panel that uh, there are uh, two ways to do that. I would encourage them to use the question and answer um, uh, window where they can post a question, and then we can address it either immediately or uh, later on in our post-webinar uh, mail. So let's see if, uh, if we have uh, any questions. Do I need to stop here now, Sharon? Just a question from my side? I don't see any questions coming up. Is anybody typing? Not at the moment, but you might uh, enchant them with your presentation, or you were very, very clear. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it. Just going to wait a couple of more uh, seconds, and uh, then if uh, no questions were uh, posted, then we will round up this uh, session today. Uh, I would like oh, to. I have one question. I see. I see. <laughs> oh, okay. From Prismislav Klos, a private person. He wants to receive the presentation. <laughs> I, I we need to see if that's possible. I don't think. But we check. What? I will answer you afterwards. I can. Uh, what I I reply to some of the people that couldn't uh, participate, uh, couldn't attend today's webinar is that we will not share the presentation itself. However, the this session will be recorded, 
and available also on our external site, so www. You will not have to be in the Philips Global Network in order to access this uh, webinar. Mm -hmm. So um, th that is how we share the information. So the presentation is still your uh, intellectual property, Sandy, mm -hmm. but the webinar itself uh, will be shared. Yeah, and then I see uh, another a uh, question coming in from Stephen Lynn, how can we balance the cost versus green design? Uh, and then uh, be between brackets, understand green materials will cost more than commodity like plastics. Well Stephen, uh, in my experience of consumer lifestyle, the green materials do not cost more anymore. So um, I think it's also here that we need to dive more into the content before uh, taking up the assumption that it's always more, because it's also about how long we will use these materials, what are they for, we cannot just say like, we cannot just compare them next to each other because it's an assumption uh, that they really cost more, it's not always the case. So I think it depends per project and we need to see which material you want to select and what we then can choose. But I do know that we have proof already that this is also a myth. It's not really true that green materials will cost more than commodity like plastics. So if you like, I can share later on some input about this. I hope this answers a bit your question. Then I don't see anything otherwise popping up. I do get an a question outside of the yeah. webinar. I heard a ping, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Then I say from Patsy, Sanya, it's a question to you. Question to me, yeah, okay. I don't see question and answer because I'm not uh, the presenter. Says, okay. I'm sorry, Patsy says, Sanya may be also very useful to use in the training for the new colleagues which we will discuss in January. Okay, point taken. I will take this into account. It's, a, it's certainly a part of the design process, absolutely. Okay, Sandy, yep. if there are no more questions. Um, Let me check on the question I have. Um, ah, no, I got, got a question from the sales about an article, but I will answer it back. <laughs> okay, outside of this, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was her question and answering was not working. Yeah. No, mine I'll not. I'll answer you back, uh, Sasa. Yeah. And then I didn't get any um, other questions uh, at the moment. Then um, uh, since I don't see it, I will leave it to you for uh, two more minutes uh, till we uh, use up the time and then you can round it up and uh, um, and say goodbye to our participants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, thank you all for taking the time to to go to this webinar and to listen to me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and if you have any questions you can come to me and I try to help you. So have further a good afternoon and uh, maybe talk to you later. Thank you for the attendance. Thank you all and until next time. <laughs>